sold, except it's not because it's commercial lending. It's not consumer. So there's no restrictions. Get your political representatives to do the right yeah. thing. Reauthorize the SBA and expand the SBA, especially because someone was asking before about microloans and such. You know, we see these horrible scam loans out there, merchant cash advances, ledger loans, inventory loans, you know, receivables, all these factoring loans. And the APRs are like 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 percent. If the SBA had a bigger agency with more funding and a more streamlined and more professional staff to underwrite loans, that means banks would make more SBA backed loans, which means business owners like you all would not need MCAs and factoring loans and et cetera, et cetera. And this is another reason why I pontificate about striving to be more proactive. It's hard to not know what we don't know. When we were doing just general business loans prior to COVID all the time, oh my God, I got one of those. It was awful or I'm making less because I've got to pay this MCA first and the interest rate is so high and they're taking it from my credit swipes. They get their money first. Well, we did a couple of these horrible loans before COVID. In fact, during COVID because as Linda mentioned before about business owners who fail to prepare, you know, because they don't have conversations with their accountants, they let their accountants run away with the tax return and just get big refunds and write everything off and show zero money or very little money on the bottom line and no profitability and no reasonable lender is going to lend against a business that shows on its tax returns almost no income. So we had to help some business owners get some of this financing. One of them was due to horrible credit. They were opening a restaurant and it was the only option. And I, I got them two approvals, two different companies, and I begged them to call their family, call your friends, try to get the money together from those sources. Don't take these loans. But they took the loans. As it turned out, they opened the restaurant and they paid off the loans very quickly, but they paid a hefty price. And the second situation was also a restaurant, again, because the business owner did not plan properly and his tax returns didn't show the income. He was opening a new restaurant and we went to a company that was putting in the furniture, banquettes and the settees and all that stuff. We financed the furniture, what's called the fixtures loan through one of these horrible lenders and the rate was terrible the payment was terrible the terms were terrible and i hope el that answers your question about class action lawsuit in my opinion it's a it's a non-starter you know suing the government for what now, all they're talking about in the congress and the senate right now is the senators are pushing the sba to collect on all of the loans, including poor Cindy, who's going through a severe medical issue and who has a $10,000 COVID loan and could really use forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And instead, this, these senators, Joni Ernst is one of them, is saying to the SBA, you better collect mm -hmm. on Cindy's loan. You better collect because there's billions of dollars for the government. Reauthorize the SBA and expand it. Pamela has some excellent advice for folks. If you get a regular SBA, which is a 7A, or a 504 and you're running into trouble, you will have received that loan most likely through a bank, not from the SBA. You want to contact your bank after the 60-day letter you received and before the file goes to the IRS. Thanks, so, Pamela. Thank you to everybody with the questions. We know we're preaching to the choir. You're showing up. You're doing the work.